As we all know, COVID-19 has changed the world. COVID-19 has changed Australia. And COVID-19 has changed the way businesses do business. Nine out of every 10 Australian businesses have used technology to adapt. Indeed, it has been said that we have made five years worth of gains in advancing the use of technology in, in this country and around the world in just a matter of eight weeks. Zoom meetings have replaced air travel. Telehealth consultations have replaced GP visits and e-commerce, which was already gaining a pace, has moved to the next level. Now, the Morrison government made a number of temporary changes to our regulation through COVID to ensure that businesses could continue to do business and people could continue to stay in jobs despite the virus. Today, we're making an announcement that a number of those changes have become permanent as well as going further in other areas. The distribution electronically of documents will now be much easier to undertake for businesses. We're enabling the execution of documents to now be undertaken digitally, and we are also enabling AGMs to be held virtually. For example, last year, Telstra printed and posted 650,000 notice of meetings at a cost of around a million dollars. No longer will that be required. We're also moving to e-invoicing by Commonwealth agencies. This is when the supplier and, the, um, and also the, the buyer's systems are automatically connected and it reduces the cost of um, an invoice by around two thirds. And this is really good for small businesses who'll be able to be paid a lot quicker. So if you are a fruit and veg supplier to an army barrack, if you are an IT consultant to a government department, by moving to e-invoicing, we will be able to ensure that you get paid a lot faster. 90% of small businesses today stu still used paper-based invoices. And if you take the Commonwealth together with the states, governments are responsible for around 10% of all business invoices. And this was an issue that I raised with the state treasurers as recently as last week. And it is hoped that the Commonwealth, by taking the lead to e-invoicing, will lead to states, and I know New South Wales has already got measures underway, other states following the Commonwealth's lead in this respect. The other initiative worth mentioning is around the consumer data right. Prime Minister, when you were Treasurer, you were promoting and pursuing the electronic exchange of consumer information in a secure and trusted way in order for consumers to get more choice and to get a cheaper product. And we have already implemented the consumer data right through open banking as it applies to credit cards today but we're also extending it to mortgages and personal loans by the end of this year. What this means is if you have a $250,000 mortgage on your home and you're a trusted customer of a bank, long-standing customer, um, you may be paying $1,000 too much for the variable uh, interest on your loan compared to the best market offer that is otherwise available. And we're extending the consumer data right also to the energy sector and why this is important because again if you are on an established uh, um, uh, paying system in one state you may be paying four hundred dollars more for a medium uh, set of um, energy supplies than you otherwise could get if you got the best median market offer if you got the best market offer available um, finally um, we should all see digital transformation as an opportunity, not as a threat. We want existing Australian businesses to transform by using the digital opportunities available to them. We want new businesses in Australia to be born digital. 
and in doing so, we will help Australian consumers and Australian businesses alike.